رسول اللہ و علیہ و صحابہ اجمعین اما بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ومن احسن قال ممن ضاء اللہ و عمل صالح و قال ان علم المسلمین رب شلی صدری و سلی امری و حل عمدت من لسانی حق تو قولی I welcome all of you to the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's a pleasure and honor for me to give a talk in this prestigious school. I'd like to thank the organizers as well as the school, the Next Generation School, for organizing this program. The topic given to me yesterday night of this afternoon's program is learn to present the beauty of Islam to the world. Topic, Alhamdulillah is good, but I am an analyst. This topic actually has four subtopics. Number one, it is the beauty of Islam. Number two, to the whole world. Then I saw on the top, present the beauty of Islam to the whole world. That's the third topic. Then the fourth is learn to present the beauty of Islam to the whole world. So four topics, four in one. And the time we have at disposal is very short. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help me to present this message in the short limited time we have to cover the four topics. If not covered, at least scratch the surface. Islam comes from the root word salam, which means peace. It's also derived from the Arabic word film, which means to submit your will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Islam in short means peace acquired by submitting your will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And any person who acquires peace by submitting his will to Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is called as a Muslim. Many people have a misconception that Islam is a new religion which came into existence 1400 years ago and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the founder of this religion. In fact, Islam is there since time immemorial, since man set foot on this earth and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is not the founder of this religion but he is the last and final messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of this religion Islam. <coughs> Many people think that Islam is only meant for the Arabs and the Muslims. And Quran was only revealed for the Arabs and the Muslims. <coughs> Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 185, <coughs> that Ramadan was the month in which the Quran was revealed as a guidance to humankind. That means the Quran was revealed for the whole of humankind. Due to shortage of time, I'll only give one reference instead of giving five references. Well, the time is short and I have time to scratch at least four topics. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad was not sent only for the Muslims and the Arabs. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Amliya, chapter number 21, verse number 97, Allah says that, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ That we have sent thee as a mercy to all the creatures, to, the, to all the worlds, to the whole of humanity. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was not sent only for the Muslims or the Arabs, but he was sent for the whole of humanity. Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Hujra, chapter number 49, verse number 13, Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakin wa unsa wa jalnaakum shayun ba wa kaba ila li ta'arafu inna kan muqin da Allah inna Allah alayhi wa kabir. That, O humankind, we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who has taqwa, who has piety, who has God consciousness, who has righteousness so here this verse of the Quran says that the whole humankind has come from one single pair of male and female and Allah has divided us into nations and tribes not that we may despise each other so that you may recognize each other. And Allah said the most honored is the person who has taqwa. The criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not whether they are rich or poor, whether they are old or young, whether they are black or white, whether they are yellow or brown, whether they are king or proper, but the 
criteria for judgment in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it's piety. This is the beauty of Islam. That Islam is not only meant for the Muslims or the Arabs, it is meant for the whole of humanity. And the person who's highest in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the person who's righteous. It is not the person who's richest. It's the person who's pious. It is not the person who's white or black. And Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra chapter number 17, verse number 70, Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." That Allah has honored all the children of Adam. That means all the children of Adam, whether they are black or white, yellow or brown, rich or poor, whether they live in America or in Saudi Arabia, or in Qatar, or in India or Pakistan, Allah has honored all the Bani Adam. Irrespective which your part of the world you come from. So this is the beauty of Islam, that Islam is for the whole of humanity. It's meant for every human being on the face of the earth. There are many ways of life or religions, and most of these religions, they speak good things. So what is the difference between Islam and the other religions? The difference between Islam and the other religions is that Islam, besides speaking good points, shows you a way how to achieve these good points. The beauty of Islam is, besides speaking good things, it shows you a way how to achieve these good things. For each topic, I've got separate lectures. I'll just give you a couple of examples. That all religions, they say, that you should not rob. Hinduism says that, Christianity says that, Buddhism says that, Islam says the same. So what is the difference between Islam and the other religions? The difference between Islam and the other religion is, Islam shows you a way how to achieve the state where people will not rob. The third pillar of Islam is that every rich person who has a saving of more than the Nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity every lunar year. Zakat is compulsory on every rich person who has a saving of more than 2.5%, who has a saving of more than Nisab level, he should give 2.5% every lunar year. If every, if every rich human being in this world gives Zakat, poverty will be eradicated from this world. After that, Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 38, as to the thief, be it a man or a woman, Chop off his or her hand. Many non-Muslims say Islam is a barbaric religion. Chopping off the hands in this science, in this age of science and technology. But if you implement, you know, today, one of the highest rate of crime anywhere in the world, it's in USA. Supposed to be one of the most advanced countries in the world, but if you see the rate of crime, it is one of the highest in the world. I'm asking a simple question, that if you implement the Islamic Sharia in USA, that every rich person who has a saving of more than the Nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she gets 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity. And after that, if any person drops, chop off his or her hand, I'm asking the question, will the rate of crime, theft, robbery in USA, will it increase? Will it remain the same or will it decrease? It will decrease. It's a practical law. You implement the Sharia and you get results. That is the reason the least rate of theft and robbery anywhere in the world is in Saudi Arabia. If you relax this law, even crime will increase. They're not that the Saudi police is very intelligent, but the Sharia laws are so good. You implement anywhere in the world, you will find results. Time will not permit me to give other examples. You can refer to my cassettes on these topics. So the beauty of Islam is that it is for the whole of humanity and it shows you a way how to achieve the state of goodness. We scratch the surface on beauty of Islam <coughs> and to the world. The topic also mentioned present the beauty of Islam to the world. It is the duty of every Muslim that he should give the message of Islam to those who are unaware of it. Dawah is compulsory on every Muslim. 
Dawa and Isla are two words. Dawa is more well known to the Indian subcontinent from India and Pakistan. When you say Dawat, when you say Dawat, we start thinking of mutton biryani or chicken biryani. <laughs> Dawat or Dawa does not mean mutton biryani or chicken biryani. Dawa or Dawat means an invitation. So when we say Dawat, Deta Hum is invitation, but we start thinking of a meal. So today we will not be talking about invitation to a meal or a lunch or a dinner. It is invitation to Islam. When we present, when we call outsider, when we present Islam to a non-Muslim, the more appropriate word is Dawa. Though it is interchanged with Isla. Isla is an Arabic word which means to repair, which means to, to improve. When we speak about Islam to a Muslim, improving him or getting him closer to Islam, the right appropriate word is Isla. And when we speak to a non-Muslim, the more appropriate Arabic word is Dawa. It is compulsory that every Muslim should convey the message of Islam to those who are not aware. And Allah says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 110, Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin nas, that, O oh, ye Muslims, ye are the best of peoples evolved for the world. Allah is giving us an honor, He is calling us Muslim as khaira ummah. The best of peoples in the whole Haira Ummah, the best of people. So whenever there is an honor given to you, it is always attached with the responsibility. There is no honor without responsibility. When Allah is giving us an honor in the Quran and calling us Muslims Haira Ummah, there has to be a responsibility. For example, in a school, the principal has got more honor than a teacher. A teacher has got more honor than a clerk. Similarly, a principal has got more responsibility than a teacher. A teacher has got more responsibility than a clerk. There is no honor without responsibility. When Allah is giving us an honor in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 110 and calling us the Khaira Ummah, don't you think we have responsibility? The answer is given in the same verse. Allah continues and says, Allah says, Ta'miruna bil ma'rufi wa talhuna an mulkar wa ta'minuna billah. Because we enjoy what is good and we forbid what is wrong and we believe in Allah. Allah is calling us the khaira ummah, the best in humanity, the best amongst all the peoples, is because we are supposed to invite towards good and forbid people from doing wrong and believe in Allah. If we do not call people towards the good and forbid them from doing wrong, if you don't do, if you do not do dawa, if you do not do isla, we aren't fit to be called as khaira ummah. We aren't fit to be called as Muslims. So the duty of every Muslim that he should convey the message of Islam to those who are unaware. And the criteria to go to Jannah is given in the glorious Quran in Surah Al Asr. That's chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3. Where Imam Shafi, may Allah have mercy on him, he said that if this surah alone was revealed, it was sufficient for guidance to the whole of humanity. So powerful is this surah, Surah Al Asr. Allah says in the surah, surah al asr chapter number 103, verse number 1 to 3, Allah says, wal asr, by the token of time, inna al insan la fi khusr, that verily man is in a state of loss, man is in khasara, illa ladhin amanu, wa aminu salihati, wa tawasaw bil haqq, wa tawasaw bil sabr, except those who have faith, those who have righteous deed, those who exhort people to truth, and those who exhort people to patience and perseverance. Allah is saying in this Quran that man is in khasara, is in loss. Except you will be saved if you have these four things, the four criteria. Number one is Iman, having faith. Number two, Amal Salihat, having righteous deed. Number three, Haq, inviting people to truth, doing dawah Islam. And the last, inviting people to patience and perseverance. 
If any of you want to hear this Surah Al-Hajj chapter 16 or 43, I'm sorry, Amma chapter number 21 verse number 7. Allah says, Fas'alu ahal zikri in Gundal Atalam. If you don't know, ask the person who knowledge you. In the social media today, the most pop, on average, you know, of course the world population, about 60% of the world population use, use the internet. Of course, this is because many are kids, very old, they don't use, some parts of the world don't have, but 60% of the world population uses internet. That is about somewhere close to 4.8 billion people, or more than 5 billion people use internet. From this, the most popular social media is the Facebook. It has 2.95 billion monthly active users. 2.95 billion. The second is the YouTube, 2.6 billion. The third is the WhatsApp, over 2.1 billion. The fourth is the Instagram, over 2 billion monthly active users. Then you have the WeChat, then you have TikTok, then you have the Facebook Messenger, and so on and so forth. We target the top few what we can do in our own way. Each social media has its advantage and disadvantage. Then you have the Pinterest, then you have the snapshot, and some media are more popular in some parts of the world as compared to others. Unfortunately, we Muslims have not been specialized. What's the difference between a Facebook and an Instagram? Between a Pinterest and a snapshot? Unfortunately, unfortunately, it, I, am, I feel ashamed that we Muslims are very weak. We have the budget. Allah has given us the money, Allah has given us the black gold. But unfortunately, we do not know how to use it, which is the most important weapon, that is the media. The specialist, I will be okay, you can hire a normal specialist, no problem. People are using a media to attack us, and we are doing nothing. When Muslims are doing some good event, people are using millions of dollars to attack us, and we are doing nothing, we are sitting doing what? Why don't you also hire specialists to counter? I remember when in UK when I was banned or rather I was excluded, we hired the best media specialist. Mark Clifford, he's number one in the world. Very expensive. But one of my one of my fans, he khalas. Then the case against me, the UK government, we had the best of law, we spent more than a million pounds. My lawyer said 99.9% .9 will win. My friend told me 95% will lose, but we give them a tough fight. We took them to the Supreme Court, to the European Court. We had the best of media specialists, such a way that the Jewish people, which were against me, started writing articles in my favor. He put me on to the Oxford Union. I was the first Muslim religious leader to speak in Oxford Union. When Theresa May, when she was the Home Secretary, she told the president, you cannot have him. He asked him, by which law are you telling me not to have? We believe in freedom of speech, we want to hear Dr. Zakir Naik. So we had a satellite in Bombay, we had a live telecast on the peaceful Full world saw it, she could not do anything. Then she became the prime minister, then she was removed. I'm just telling you that we have to use. Allah says, Fas'alu ahali zikri in Gundala Ta'anu. Don't know as the person is put. He may be a non-Muslim, no problem. You know, Max Clifford, when he went to him, when my friend went to him, he said, Muslim, I don't want you. Only one is taken of Dodi, you know Dodi, who owns the Heralds of Diana. Ah, Dodi and Fire. Only his, because he had the money. So when my friend went, he refused. After next day, he gets a call. Maybe he went to the internet and saw Dr. Zakir Naik is. Then I go to meet him in Paris, because I can't go to UK. So he plans the strategy. My friend turned out to be right. We lost the case, but we won the battle. Peace TV continued for another more than 10 years. We lost the case, but we won the battle. I'm just trying to tell that we should know how to strategize ourselves. When an enemy is attacking us, we should know how to defend. We have a right. Today, enemies are attacking us, we are doing nothing. Use the same media against them. We are doing some good work, and are using millions of dollars to attack us, what are we doing? Nothing. So media is the most important weapon in the world. And every media is a different strategy. <coughs> Facebook is different, Instagram is different, we should know when to use what. And, Alhamdulillah, it's all because of Allah, we are nothing. I always say, I'm zero, I'm nothing without Allah. Allah helped us, 
in a place where we cannot dream of doing dawa in Bombay, which was controlled at that time by the BGP and Shushana, Allah made us have the largest Islamic English conference in the world. You could have to imagine, not that we were intelligent, not that we were great. Allah said, Alhamdulillah, we, we entered the Facebook. In 2012, they blocked my Facebook. The, the Indian government complained, they blocked, it became zero. It was a million, became zero. Then we learned, okay, what to do, how not to get it blocked. We did. Then we started from scratch in 2030. MashaAllah, today it is 23 million, more than 23 million followers. <laughs> it is the largest English religious speaker in the world. No Christian, no Hindu has this following. Yes, of course, sportsman Ronaldo has more. He has 150 million, 145, but he's a sportsman, singer, grand singer. But as far as English speaking, religious speakers are concerned, whether Hindu or a Christian or a Muslim, Alhamdulillah. So we have to learn the technology and utilize. Let me tell you very clearly, all these free social media, whether it be Facebook, whether it be YouTube, whether it be Instagram, whether it be Pinterest, we cannot do dawah the way we want to do. Our hands are tied. That's the reason it was blocked. Depending upon the... So you have to study the policy. Today, Indian government is complaining to Facebook. It's not getting blocked. We learn what to say and what not to say. We cannot speak the full truth. Our hands are tied. What we can speak by doing? Because it's a free platform. For a peace TV, we can speak what we want to a great extent. But on social media, we cannot. People tell me, okay, why spend so much on sites like Facebook is free? <coughs> Facebook, I can put maximum four or five posts. YouTube, few minutes, three or four. They don't know that Facebook controls. Previously, when I had four million followers, they used to send to every follower, maybe 3.8 million used to read it. Today, they send to less than 2% or 5%. You have to pay for it. We don't pay. I always organic. You want to send to all, you have to pay money. We don't want to pay money. Everything you cannot say many things. Uh, Twitter, Twitter is not giving me the official. Instagram is not giving the official blue tick, so that I don't get followers. They can control you. So be prepared. You should have a second line of defense. These media utilize the way you can. You cannot say everything what you can say. People aren't aware of the policies of these big giants. Yes, you have a separate media called as the paid media, and the best paid media in the world today. In terms of volume, it is Netflix, which has which had more than 200 uh, million subscribers. But Netflix again has its own bandwidth, its own cloud front. So last year, mashallah, we launched our own platform called Al Hidayah, which is the largest Islamic video platform in the world, video on demand. We we merged it with with the LMS Learning Management System where we have programs, where we have learning management system, we have courses, Islamic courses. So we studied all the courses done by the Islamic, we studied them when we were the non-Muslim. We, we studied and we launched our own al Hidayah in terms of quality, Alhamdulillah. Netflix is a movie. They have got different genres, you know, the, your romance, action, thriller, etc. We have our own, whether you're on lecture, whether you're on debate, whether TV talk, whether group discussion, children program, and so on and so forth. Then we have different types, whether you're on fiqh, you're on tafsir, you're on hadith, you're on dawah, you're on Christianity, Hinduism, 50 more than that. We have two sections, one of Dr. Rakhine, like myself and my son, and the other we have other speakers, 40 best Islamic speakers in English. We have two sections of the platform. And this is the first media that we started with uh, paid, and the reason was people are keeping it paid. If I keep it free, I can't afford it. You may not be aware that the bandwidth is very expensive. If all the Peace TV viewers come to my al Hidayah, you know what will be the cost of the bandwidth? Netflix is spending more than a billion dollars every year only on bandwidth. I can afford it. Billion dollars, yes. So bandwidth is expensive. If you have the cheap bandwidth, it is free. We want quality. We want 4K, 8K. So the bandwidth that we are on Amazon, we got a good discount, but not as much as Netflix. We cannot compete with them. So, the different strategy. This, to close down our Alidaya is very difficult. Unlike Facebook, which we close overnight, whether it be YouTube, whether it be <coughs> Instagram, whether it be Twitter, overnight. This, more difficult, not that's impossible. 
So we have to study how you can reach the masses and we should utilize this. This was talking about Dawa as far as media is concerned. I'll just wind up in the next five minutes so that we can have a break, I think, for the Asar Salah, inshallah. The last is the best Dawa is one to one. That's what the Prophet did in the Sabbath. Day. You cannot compare the effectiveness of one to one Dawa, but the reach is minimal. And one to one Dawa you can do it one at a time. Now, one to one Dawa can be extended to a gathering. Now we have maybe a few hundred people here. It can go to a few thousand, can go to 10,000, 100,000, 1 million maximum. One to one Dawa is more effective. If you have a lecture in a group, then less effective. But the audience is more, so impact is more. The net reach is more. One to one impact is highest. And I tell that hypothetically, hypothetically, it is a very good diet, very effective diet. Okay, if he sits with maybe 10 non Muslims, each non Muslim may take about two hours on average to talk about Islam. Maybe his effective rate, if he's a very good diet, 20% is very good. So if he meets with 10 dice, Maybe you can convince two. That's very good. I don't know that you can convince out of ten two. A very good call. So twenty hours two. Give me a lecture. Okay, one hour lecture, two hour lecture. How many are watching? Thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand. Twenty percent won't accept. Even if two percent accept, if thousand are giving, two percent. If twenty, in one hour twenty, the twenty hours two. So which is better? Lecture. You want the media satellite, you are reaching 50 million, 100 million. The percentage may be 0.001%, but the net people affecting every day may be hundreds. You are sitting at home. Your programs are continuing on the satellite. 100 million people are watching. Every day hundreds are accepting it. Sitting at home. The time is once you produce it. So there is an effectiveness one to one is the maximum best. That's what the Prophet did the Sabbath. Did. Then lecture, then comes the media. The larger you reach, the less effective, but the reach is more. So productivity, just to give you. So where it comes to one to one dawah, we have a training session. And on this platform, al we have a program called as Let's Be, Let's Become Effective Dais. To become Dai, okay. Let's become Effective Dais. There's a program, it's a course. So we had this training program, the first training program internationally we had in 1999, then the next one we had was just before I was made to the Hijra from India. That's in January, February 2016. And we had a program where we called 20 dwarfs from different parts of the world. And we trained them, you know, from, from UK, from Holland, from Japan, from Singapore, from Malaysia, uh, uh, from Indonesia, from 12 different countries where 20 died. And the program was free, but we had effective program. We only spent about $2 million on, on training 20 people, $100,000 per person. There is no dawah training that I know in the world, it is Howard University where they spent $2 million. Yes, the trainer may charge. This is without the cost of the trainer, I was free. But we had it secured in the best media with the best of LED screens behind, with the best of technology, it was actually a world record that for 45 days we recorded. Every day, on average, about 10 hours, on 14 8K and 4K cameras, having a more than about 3 or 5 petabytes, but Guinness Book did not accept, so you have to inform us 2 months in advance, it's too late, and you know that the excuses for not recording, but it was a world record. We secured it. And now it's coming on the platform Alidaya. And what today science tells us, when a person gives a speech in public, the matter he speaks carries only 7% of weightage. 93% is presentation skills. How he models his voice, his gestures, his eye to eye contact, all this are presentation skills. So 93% of what you speak on the stage is presentation skills. 7% is matter. So in this training program, we are talking more about technique rather than 
Okay, inshallah. So we'll talk about after. Take a break or something. Okay, inshallah. We'll end it in two minutes or you know, okay, I'll just finish in two minutes. Because here we don't realize then is the third minute Maghrib because everything is paused. And then, uh, so the thing is that, that so this training program was mainly specialized in how to be effective dive. And we have this program, it is recorded on the best of cameras and it is going to come on the platform of, uh, of Alizaya. There we train about how to use the various technology of Dawa, the techniques. It was not a knowledge based program, though there were more than a thousand pages of matter, but it was not, it was more technique based program. Here we teach number one, the three criteria required, and, and I'll end my talk here. There are three criteria required for you to be effective, die or effective anything, any good thing in the world you want to do. There are three criteria, including be effective. The number one is the help of Allah. Allah says in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 160, if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If Allah forsakes you, who is there then, then who can overcome you? Number one is help of Allah. Number two, Allah says in Surah Ankabut chapter 29 verse 69, you strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will open up your pathway. Number two is striving and struggling, doing jihad. Number three, Allah says, Fas'alu ahali zikri in gullah ta'ala mu. Surah uh, Ambiya chapter 21 verse number 7 and Surah Nahal chapter 16 verse number 43. That if you don't know, ask the person who is it. The third is technique. Number one is Allah's help. Number two <coughs> is striving and struggling. Number three is technique. People say, oh doctor, how to get technique? I said, number one is how to get Allah's help, not technique. Technique is last. So in this program, we show how to get Allah's help. Then how to strive and struggle. And last is technique. These three are the formulas for any good work. And if you have this, you can be effective in whatever good work you want. For that, you can see the training program. I would like to end my talk so that, inshallah, we can have a break uh, for the Asal Salah. And after that, inshallah, we'll have the question and session. Wa akhar dawan ahandra Inshallah. 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 Ashadu, Ashadu, Allah, Allah, Ilaha, Ilaha, Illallah, 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 Washadu, Washadu, Anna, Anna, Muhammadan, Muhammadan, Abduhu, Abduhu, Warsuluhu, Warsuluhu. I bear witness, I bear witness that, that there is no God. There is no God but Allah, but Allah, and I bear witness that, and I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad, a Prophet Muhammad, is the messenger, is the messenger, and servant, and servant of Allah, of Allah. And inshallah, inshallah, and inshallah, and the best thing before that, that is Akhara. That anyone who accepts, any non Muslim accepts Islam, whatever sin he did in the past will be forgiven. And the greater sin he did, the greater positive point he will get when he accepts Islam. So I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that. May he grant you the best of us and may he give you the best in this world and thereafter. Amen. Actually, in yesterday, uh, yesterday evening, my wife forwarded the video where Joseph is a YouTuber and he's a YouTuber and he makes videos giving comments on what I heard from his speech on the YouTube that he tried to first learn about Islam, or take a course in Islam, and then he saw the videos of mine and other speakers like Sheikh Didad, and he started giving his comments, and one year, while giving comments in knowledge in Greece, and mashallah, he said he wanted to come to Qatar, and I did not know, I just tried on the email when he came to in Qatar, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the best in this world and the akhirah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make him a very make him a catalyst in spreading the deen to the other non-Muslims, mashallah. And with the Jonas, you can continue with the name Jonas, or if you want to keep an Islamic name, the equivalent of Jonas is Yusuf. Which is also the name of one of the Prophet Yusuf al -Salam. So, if you feel, you can continue with the name Joseph, that's also the same name, but if you want an Arabic name, so you can call yourself Yusuf. 
And inshallah, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make you the catalyst in giving hidayah, guidance to your family, members, to your friends, and all of the world, inshallah. MashaAllah. Tell me other You're welcome, man. You should have been multiple times better than what you'd be with the Rabbi Muslim. What? That's what the Quran says. So if this, I don't know if these guys were they trained or not. This is the difference. A guy should be trained. There's a difference between doing the whole different people and when I was speaking with the Islamic minister over here. I told him, yes, in the Gulf country, you do have people, you know, they do the with the blue collar. They do the to the Indian non Muslims, to the Bangladeshi, you know, to the, to the Nepali, Sri Lanka. You know, Alhamdulillah, very good. But they will not be trained with doing dawah to Westerner. Or the Dawa center in the Gulf country, the Saudi Arabia, or here, they may do dawah to the blue collar. Blue collar means Alhamdulillah. Yeah. The good is there's nothing wrong about it, but they are low income people. So there's a different technique. But this technique is for both low income and high income. If I meet an Israeli, which is very rare, it is rare to meet an Israeli in the, in the Muslim land, this is your golden opportunity. You should not leave it. You are Israeli, mashallah. You can hug him, you can, you can put him down, give him gawa, give him coffee, give him dates, give him your hospitality. And then we ask a simple question, may we know what are the Palestinians in Turkey? Why are they telling you? Ask them. Ask them a question. Why are the Palestinians in Turkey? Ask a simple question. So you as a dai, first give him good treatment. And he should be obvious because he's a Israeli, you have been better to it. If you come to know, make it very obvious. The moment you came to know it from Israel, your nature should change. From good, you become very good, excellent. Take him hospitality, take him for lunch, take him for dinner, no problem. No Quran says one of the criteria where you can use the zakah money is more of The harsh coming to Islam. It's an opportunity. Those the Israeli coming here, go to the opportunity lost. Allah will question him on the day of the day. Why did you give him the message? Huh? Did, is, 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 can Israeli become a Muslim or not? Why not? Double so Correct? And if you are the, you are the instrument Allah gives, you get no so So this is a golden opportunity. Give him food. And then, they should know that because of the Israeli are doing that, that's the reason for me. All the non-Muslim program are just upon us. Even if they ask questions on other topics, I love this. Opportunity. Have to be good to them. Quran says, repel evil with good. That doesn't mean all the non-Muslims are evil, but the Israeli, you know. And you may not know him, but they're good Israeli also. Please keep it in your mind that all the Israelis living in Israel are not against the Palestinians. Maybe he was a good Israeli who's come here and he lost the opportunity. He may be lacking the Palestinian loving, but he may not have, he may not have Tawheed. This is a chance to be Tawheed. So I believe this was a good, irrespective of whether he was good or bad. This is an opportunity. The moment you come to know he's an Israeli, you should see to it that you go out of the way. I remember when I started Dawa, when I started in the 90s, early 90s, when we had Dawa organization. You know, my house was approximately two kilometers away. So if any non-Muslims comes to the office, I have one motorcycle and I have my spray, look. 